Is our Earth special or just one of a million planets out there? That's what we're going to talk about today. The universe is a deadly place. At every opportunity, it is trying to kill us. Neil deGrasse Tyson. The universe is an interesting place. And the question always comes in, is the universe filled with a million Earths out there? That was always Carl Sagan's piece, that if we're alone in the universe, it's a very big waste of space, that every solar system and planet has this opportunity to create an Earth. But then I read a book called Rare Earth by Peter Ward and even saw some various documentaries about this topic. This is a whole other theory out there. This isn't religious. This isn't something like that. This is something that says, no, no, no. Earth is very special. For these reasons, it's rare. And it's in contrast to what Carl Sagan always said. Now, I was a big Carl Sagan fan. I had images that I was going to run away to Cornell and become an astronomer with Carl Sagan's um, lectures, you know, never happened, obviously. But this book brought out this whole piece to me where uh, potentially it's not even true. And this is hypothesis driven. It's scientific focused. It's based on astrophysics and geology, planetary science, evolutionary biology. And so the idea is that the Earth is very special. And we'll go over why Earth is so special. And it honestly converted me over to thinking earth is particularly special it's not one of those things that we're going to find a million earths out there it's going to be this hodgepodge of situations out there in the universe when it comes to planets so one particular thing that comes to earth itself let's start smallest and go outwards is first of all we have an iron core and our iron core produces a magnetic shield that protects us from the worst blasts of the sun. You can see planets like Mars don't have that magnetic protection shield. And so even if at one point it had an atmosphere, it had water, it had oceans, as the sun just barraged Mars, it whiffed all moisture, all atmosphere away from it. Even if we go through and build another atmosphere, something is going to have to be done to protect against the sun. So the earth has that special type of protection. We also live in what is called the Goldilocks zone. The Goldilocks zone means that it we're not too hot, we're not too cold. If we were either of these, we couldn't have life on it because it would either never form, never be able to produce the amino acids and the proteins to have life, and also meaning liquid water. I think when I was a kid, there was this idea that, oh, anything could be life. And now I think we're down to this idea, now that we know a little bit more, that we either have to be carbon-based or we have to be silicon-based, but not every element can produce life. We're not going to go out there and find a boron-based humanity or people out there. We have a lot of elements, which means that we have the right mixture of nitrogen and oxygen. We can support life easily, not only just our life, what, what, what we eat, what they eat, eats, you know, so it's everything like that. The other thing, and we mentioned it when we talked about spring, we have a 23 degree tilt, which means that we just don't have these polar ice caps and these boiling hot middle portions of the earth. We have seasons. And that season means that a lot of different types of life, a lot of different life can live on it because nothing gets too hot or too cold where life doesn't exist. I don't think there's any place on earth where life does not exist. Water is a very important solvent for biochemical reactions, and we have plenty of it, but not so much of it that we're just a water world where we would never have land. We have plate tectonics. We talked about this in the previous podcast and volcanic activity, which means that not only do we get heavy elements, because we have heavy elements because of how our planets were formed, it gives us the ability to have gases in the atmosphere that produces the ability to breathe here. The Earth itself regulates our temperature, regulates the amount of different gases in our atmosphere, and we also have the elements we need 
to produce iron, to produce metals. Uh, so that allows us to have an advanced civilization. We talk a lot about the greenhouse gas effect, but we need the greenhouse gas effect in order to keep the earth within a suitable temperature range. We don't want too much greenhouse gas or not at all greenhouse gases. If you get too much, you end up like Venus. And if you don't have enough, you end up, I think, like Mars. We have the right mixture of it. We have the right chemical makeup. We have plate tectonics we, with our volcanic activity to gather minerals and put them together into veins so that we can harvest them. This planet is really special. We have a solid rotation that allows us to, again, have night and day cycles and a good solid year that doesn't take us too far away from the sun. And we have a moon. And the moon produces that tidal situation, which creates a very good ocean for life. If our moon was too close to us or too large, it would produce too much tidal activity. And if we didn't have one at all, we would have very little tidal activity. And so we have a moon in the right position for us. And not necessary for life, but the moon is exactly in the right position to create total eclipses, which has been helpful scientifically. Not necessary for life, but very interesting. Our sun is, it approximately has a lifespan of 10 billion years. We are not in danger of it going supernova anytime soon, dying out as a sun. And it's not so young that it's volatile and constantly throwing out dangerous radiation at it. It is at the perfect lifespan to promote life on this planet. 95% of all stars that are out there are actually less massive than our sun. And so that means it lacks that gravitational pull. It lacks a lot of the chemicals that are produced by it and the energy coming off of the sun. But our sun being that nice yellow sun, there are red dwarfs, there are black holes, there are brown dwarfs, and they produce a lot of radiation, which would have harmed Earth's ability to create life or retain the atmosphere or water on this planet. We have a sun that is not particularly active. There are suns out there that are wild with solar activity and are destructive to the planets on their inner circles. But if the sun had no activity, it would also mean that we would have, I think, less temperature variety. The sun's activity produces the temperatures we have around us. So we have a good sun. It's not too gravitational. It's not too hot. It's not too active. It's the right level of activity. We are in very circular orbits. A lot of solar systems that we've been seeing recently is that there are very wild orbits around suns, some that are very oval, some that are very large, meaning that a year takes a long, long time to get around their sun, that it means that they are so wild in their orbit, sometimes they go into what would be their own Kuiper belt, their own asteroid belt, which would be very dangerous to any life on any planet. It would not give planetary life any time to build up. It would keep getting hit by asteroids. Also, if these are very large orbits or very irregular orbits, it would get too hot and too cold. And so if even if you got life started on it, they would die off when it got to the cold parts of its orbit. So we live in a very round orbit, which makes our seasons and our years very even. And life needs stability. But even if we look into our solar system, we have a Jupiter. And you think, well, Jupiter's not all that important, right? It's very far away. What good is a Jupiter? You know what it is? It's a vacuum cleaner. So we talked about in the comment section, that we have these Oort clouds, these areas where there are large pieces of rocks that would destroy Earth if it got too close to us. Many of these types of objects fly too close to Jupiter, and Ju Jupiter sucks them in, smashes them into that giant planet that causes no harm, and then protects us so that we can be protected from those items. And even when a few of them come through, they are mostly going around the sun, and if they're going to fall into something, they fall into the sun. So between the gravitational pull of the sun and the gravitational pull of Jupiter, 
we are protected from all these big pieces of rock floating in our galaxy. We also are far enough away from gamma bursts, which, you know, would be blasts of radiation coming our way, supernova, black holes. We are in a fairly safe position in our orbits. They said that so far we've seen about 5,000 exoplanets. And our vibe is none of them are great for intelligent life, civilization building. We may find something different or people living underwater, but right now it doesn't look good for the great planets out there. Some of them are water worlds. Some of them are big rocks. Some of them have no atmosphere. Some of them are living in dangerous areas where they're getting bombarded by radiation or smaller rocks all the time. We are in a special spot being right here. I talked about how we are in a particularly good spot in our solar system, not too far, not too close to the sun. We have Jupiter out there cleaning up things and stabilizing all the orbits of the other planets. We have a good orbital area. Well, you know what? We're also for our solar system in a good position. I was listening to a lecture oh, a couple of weeks ago, and it was talking about how the center of the galaxy is volatile, full of radiation, full of black holes eating things up and various solar systems hitting each other. The universe and the galaxy are dangerous places, but we are on an outer arm. We are far enough away from all the hubbub going on around the center. We're far enough away from the black holes that are at the center of every galaxy. We are away from exploding stars and planetary objects hitting each other. We don't have the bursts of radiation coming from some of these astronomical objects that are out there. We are far enough away from a sun going supernova too close to a planet could destroy a planet. So not only are we in a good spot in our solar system, we're a good spot in our galaxy as well. We are protected from the worst of the dangerous things that are out there that would destroy life on any planet that was closer in. But if we were too far out in our galaxy arm, then we wouldn't have raw materials. We wouldn't have materials to produce planets. We wouldn't have heavy metals and all the things that makes this Earth special with its composition. There are also places in the galaxy, too, that are star burst centers. If you look at Orion's belt, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. That is a star birthing area. Very unstable, high bursts of radiation. We would be in trouble there as well. So we're in a particularly good spot when it comes to all the dangerous things that Neil deGrasse Tyson talked about. This is a particularly stable, safe place to be. And we are in the Goldilocks area, not just of our solar system, but of our galaxy and of the universe. This is a good spot to be. And so I guess my point in making this podcast is to just bring up Earth is special. We're not going to find a million Earths out there. We're not going to find Earths in all the different directions we point our telescopes. This is a special place and an amazing home to live on. So I guess my challenge to you is think about all the things that you appreciate about this planet. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. I would love to hear from you and hear what things you love about this particular planet. Please remember to subscribe, tell a friend, and share this podcast with someone else. And remember, our travels through this universe is dangerous, but we're in a particularly good spot.